Park Rogers TV, where serious fans play. Catch our videos at YouTube and our long-form conversations with college football contributors across the country on iTunes and Podbean. Search Mark Rogers TV. All right, here we are with the top 10 running backs in college football entering 2017. So this is based on past performance and projection to production this fall. This has nothing to do with uh, complimentary uh, features on the offense, meaning offensive line or quarterback. So there could be players listed higher who have less productive seasons Think Tom Brady moving to the Jacksonville Jaguars, not being as productive, but still being Tom Brady. All right, let's start at number 10 with Justin Jackson. You could probably bet anybody across the nation that uh, Justin Jackson is not in line to become one of the five most prolific backs in the history of the Big Ten. But if he produces his typical season, he will be in that elite company and also one of only eight players in the history of college football who have gained 1,000 yards in all four seasons. His Northwestern uh, accomplishments include 1,524 yards last season, 5.1 per carry, 15 touchdowns out of the backfield, 35 receptions, and this is after 2,500 total yards in his first two campaigns. He finished off 2016 in style with an upset win over Pitt in which he owned the game, 224 yards on 32 carries and three touchdowns. The only thing he derogatory you can say about Justin Jackson is he doesn't have elite explosion, elite speed. He was caught from behind, from like 20 yards behind on two long runs in that very postseason game against the Pitt Panthers. He did run for 100 yards six times last season, including a buck 71 against Iowa and that very stout front seven on defense for the Hawkeyes. He is just about a 357 yards, actually, to be specific, uh, yards away from gaining the all-time Northwestern rushing record from Damian Anderson. Our number 10 back is Justin Jackson out of Northwestern. Number nine, Travion Williams. So we go from a senior to a freshman from 2016 coming into a sophomore campaign. The Aggie rushed for just over 1,000 yards, 6.8 per carry, eight touchdowns, had 19 catches out of the backfield. Explosive to the second level. Gained most of his big runs between the tackles, not because he's a bruiser, but because he would get to the second level so quick between the hole, between any kind of uh, niche that he could find, and then he was gone. Uh, just an explosive back with great balance, uh, makes plays between the, the tackles going north and south, doesn't dance around, hits the hole and goes. Uh, broke out with huge games midseason against an Auburn defense that boasted one of the top front fours in the conference in the nation. Eight carries for a buck 27 against the Tigers. Then he hit Arkansas up 15 for 153. And then Tennessee, 28 carries for 217. Bogged down down the stretch against two of the superior run defenses in LSU and, of course, Alabama. Coming into a sophomore season, we've got, yes, Travion Williams at number nine. Number eight back in the nation. We stay in the SEC with Cam Petway of Auburn. He is a bruiser. Yes, he gained 1,224 yards, 5.9 per carry, and seven touchdowns in just nine games. He had a quad injury that kept him out of four games, so he is set to have a huge 2017 with Garrett Stidham providing more of a balanced attack. Defenses will have to lay off the run, and Petway could thrive. He said in the offseason he dreams of a Heisman, and he could be in line. Bovada's got him at 25-1, to and with new offensive coordinator Chip Lindsey in place, he says he's going to get Cam Petway the ball out of the backfield as a receiver more after Petway only caught two passes in 2016. So consider nine games played. He had seven 100-yard performances. The downer, and this is a trend, as we talked about Travion Williams against Bama, uh, Camp Headway, 12 carries for 17 yards against Bama, kind of fitting in that Leonard Fournette mold. You need some blocking and some help up front. All right, we go to number seven on the list with Akram Wadley out of Iowa. 1,081 yards, 6.1 per carry, 10 touchdowns, actually 6.4 yards per carry, 36 catches out of the backfield for three touchdowns. Awfully impressive with him down the stretch. Check out the bowl game against Florida, despite the Hawkeyes getting annihilated in the fourth quarter and losing 30-3. to 
The Florida front seven, one of the best in the nation, could not hold him bent down. 115 yards on the ground. He also had a buck 15 against a very strong Michigan front seven as well. Quick makes the jump cut, finds the open space. He's also tough between the tackles, even though he's not a huge back. Uh, just an exceptional guy. Six 100-yard games. Akram Wadley out of Iowa, one to watch as our number seven running back for 2017. We go back to the SEC for selection number six, and Darius Geis out of LSU. Despite the presence of Leonard Fournette, he still ran for 1,387 yards at 7.6 per carry in the SEC. 15 touchdowns on the ground, nine receptions out of the backfield. That needs to increase under new offensive coordinator Matt Canada. I've got to think that he is devising ways to get Geis the football in space. He had... Just some monster games. Consider that he's just the fourth back in the history of the conference to gain 250-plus yards against two opponents. Arkansas, 252. Texas A&M, 285. The other three backs, Herschel, Bo, and Mo Williams. Not quite in the ilk of the other two, but still Mo Williams, a very uh, prominent back in the SEC in the Minnesota Vikings. All right. Number five, Royce Freeman didn't have a great 2016, just about 1,000 yards rushing and 5.6 per carry, nine touchdowns. He did catch 23 out of the backfield. He's an exceptional receiver. He's coming into his senior season after a huge sophomore campaign. He's kind of fallen and declined as the Oregon program has. 1,838 yards as a sophomore with 19 touchdowns scored. He was also integral in getting Oregon to the national championship game as a freshman in 2014. Pro Football Focus, after his stellar 2015, rated him number three in elusiveness, top 10 after contact, and top 10 as a receiver. Uh, He can do it all. 22 100-yard games in his career already and coming into a senior campaign with 48 career touchdowns. Royce Freeman, Oregon, number five. All right, let's get to the final four. Bo Scarborough. Alabama, the stats don't wow anyone. He, uh, of course, shared duties in the backfield with Damian Harris, but took it down the stretch as the tide came within that much of a national championship. 812 yards, 6.5 per carry, 11 touchdowns on the ground. Derrick Henry, Bo Scarborough, almost the same back in terms of brutal contact where defenders don't want to make contact with Bo Scarborough. He is that punishing of a runner only had 51 attempts through the first eight games of the season then then you decided to get him the football in the national championship game against Clemson he was sorely missed in the latter half of the uh, third quarter and into the fourth quarter 16 carries for 93 yards and two long touchdown runs against the Tigers and then it was all up to Jalen Hurts as Damian Harris just didn't provide that a punishing running style against that stout Clemson front four. Bo Scarborough, our number four running back in the nation for 2017. On to the final three with USC's Ronald Jones Jr. He's a track sprinter. New running back coach Dylan McCullough uh, has molded great backs out of Indiana. Trayvon Coleman recently, Jordan Lynch, and some others. He will do the same with Ronald Jones. He's a bit lacking in some of the periphery skills for running back, namely pass blocking. And when you've got possibly the best quarterback in the nation, you need protection on the backside. So Sam Darnold is wanting Ronald Jones to be on the field for a number of reasons, including to protect his back. All right, 1,082 yards, 6.1 per carry, 12 touchdowns. And similar to Darius Geis, who only had nine catches, Ronald Jones with 11. What this kid could do if he caught 35 or 40 passes out of the backfield needs to improve their receiving skills, and they need to get him involved in the pass game more at USC. Offensive coordinator T. Martin likens Ronald Jones to Jamal Charles. He says he just makes it look easy effortless. He's that good. He's that talented. He's that fluid. Our number two back on our top 10 list for 2017 is Nick Chubb out of Georgia. Georgia fans lamenting that Chubb hasn't been on the field uh, the entire time for the last two seasons, but at the same time could be a blessing in disguise uh, for Georgia football that he didn't move on to the NFL. Needs to prove himself in his senior season. 
exploded onto the season, onto the scene in relief of Todd Gurley as a freshman with 1,547 yards and 15 touchdowns. Last season, just over 1,000 yards at 11.35 per carry and eight touchdowns. He only caught five passes out of the backfield. Needs to improve on that for the next level. Hit up North Carolina for 222 in the opener. And then we caught him in the bowl game against TCU and uh, had 142 yards against the Horned Frogs as the Bulldogs came back for the win. Not a whole lot of Nick Chubb type productivity in between due to the injury issues. First, it was a knee in the 2015 campaign. It was an ankle last season against Tennessee uh, with Sony Michelle and Nick Chubb carrying the football for Georgia. Look for Jacob Eason to have a huge year for the Bulldogs. And our number one running back for 2017, it's Saquon Barkley of Penn State. If you missed the Rose Bowl, you're probably not a college football fan. So you saw the Rose Bowl. That's all you need to see. Saquon Barkley hit the scene two years ago against Ohio State. His team was outmanned, but he hit up a Buckeyes defense that was littered with top-level NFL prospects for 194 yards, and he hasn't stopped since. Of course, the great run against USC in the Rose Bowl had a big game with just about 200 yards rushing, 1496 for the season, 5.5 per carry, 18 touchdowns. He's in line to break every meaningful Penn State rushing record, both single season and career. He is the complete package despite... um, Being regarded as a smallish, more scat back, that's certainly not the case. He runs it between the tackles, and he's done it with a marginal offensive line. That's the top 10 running backs for 2017, according to Mark Rogers TV. We would love to hear from you.